Okay, before we get into quadratic uh, functions, we're, we're going to continue our diversion. Um, I guess maybe stop at Barstow, I don't know, after Baker, whatever. But we're going to continue talking about the idea of an at algebra, only this time our objects are going to be complex numbers. Right? So you can think of an algebra as a set of objects plus rules. And those rules are going to be add, subtract, multiply, and divide. Now, calm down. We, we got this. We can do this. It's very manageable. Right? So the objects in this case are going to be complex numbers. Last, in the last lecture, they were functions. So we have to, I have to define, tell you how you can add two complex numbers, subtract, multiply, and divide. And that's what's coming out of this section. Now, we need a few preliminary definitions. Basically, what we're trying to do is generalize to, well, square roots of negative numbers. Um, so it's just, you have to understand, it's just notation. Um, I is the square root of minus 1. I mean, it doesn't mean anything. Square root of minus 1, I. It's just a placeholder, right? It's just, and it, to add insult to injury, because we have real numbers, we're going to call these uh, imaginary numbers, and, and we wonder why people laugh at mathematicians. I don't know. I mean, I don't know. We could call them spooky numbers, I guess. I don't know. I for imaginary number. It's minus one. Okay? And you have to also define, it's not obvious that I squared is, it's not given. I squared equals minus one. Right, so i is the square root of minus one, i squared is minus one. So we just that's gonna come up, and it's gonna come up a little bit through the course, okay? So just hold on to that. So a complex number, instead of calling it x and z, that's you know, it has two parts. It has a real component and it has an yeah, imaginary component. A and b are real numbers. Okay. Now we're gonna need the complex, what's called the conjugate. So you put a little bar over it there. See the little bar over to Z. And the difference is if, if the number has a plus, the conjugate has a minus. Okay, so that, that's the difference. Right? The, the plus and the minus there. Okay, so you just flip the sign of the imaginary part. This, the conjugate is going to be what we use when we, do, we come up with division. Okay, so we're going to use the conjugate when we do um, division of complex numbers. So just, just hold on to that. Okay, we're going to use that. Right. Well, here it is. Right, let's just start out. Do you know what a complex number is? That's, I mean, that's the first question. It has to look like this, right? It's a template. I've been leading you up to this because this is important, right? We have to think in terms of math, not wishful thinking. Is that a complex number? Can you tell me what A and B are? Yeah, I mean, this isn't too bad. If it's a complex number, it has to look like that, right? So A is A and B is 6. If I can put it in the template, then check. It's a complex number. All right? How about this one? Try this one. See if you can do this. Is this a complex? Yes or no? Not a guess. Tell me, based on math, why or why not it is not. Okay? Just try it. And let me jump in. Can you fit it in this template? Oh, look at that. Look at what I did there. Zero. Same thing we did with polynomials. That just happened. Yeah, yeah, you're saying to yourself, yeah, that just happened. Same thing we did with polynomials. Mind blown. Yep, yep, I hear you. So now what do you have? You have A is zero, and you have B is six, and you fit the template. You're good to go. So 6i is a complex number. How about this one? How about that one? Take your time, pause the video, see if you can figure it out. I want an answer, not just, just I guess. Try it, try it. Again, we've done the same thing with polynomials and so forth. We're playing a game here. I'm trying to get you to learn to play the game. So let me jump in. Can I put it in this form? Hmm, yep, yep, you're thinking, you're thinking. I did it again! No, you didn't! Yes, I did. Look at that. Zero for the imaginary part. So, yes, a real number can be considered a complex number, right? With the imaginary part as zero. Okay, all we're doing is playing the exact same game. We did it with polynomials. We're doing it again. We did it with lines, mx plus b. Bam. How about this one? Is that a complex number? Now, now I got you psyched out, right? Now you're psyched out. 
Okay, try it. Can I put it in this form? I see you thinking that's right. If I rewrite it, if I rewrite it, I can. Again, three times. Yes, I did. Three times we, we did to play the game. Yes, yes. So the answer, no. Now it is four plus three I, right? It looks good. But that's not what I gave you, right? That's not, so again, I did, you have to simplify it, right? So if the question asks you for a complex number, four plus three I, not that. You guys see? I mean, that's just a game. I mean, you'll see the answers in the book. That's just a game. If I want a complex number, I want it written, you have to tell me what A and B are. You have. I mean, that's just, it's just not, that's just the way it is. All right. So we're, we're going to add them. I'm going to give you two complex numbers. Let's call them, I don't know, instead of x1 and x2, they're complex. So I'll call it z1 and z2. I guess it's z complex. Number. I don't know. And we'll add them and subtract them, and then I'll show you how to multiply them and then how to divide them. But add and subtract works just as you would think. I mean, let's do the add first. Right? All I'm doing is for the first one, I'm plugging in its value right into the box. For the second one, I'll just plug in its value into the box. And it just works exactly the same. I'm going to drop the brackets. I'm just going to reorganize everything. Right? I'm just dropping the bracket. I'm going to put the, the, the real part with the real part, right? A plus the three together. And I'm going to put the you know, imaginary parts together, just to group. So I'm going to group the real parts, factor out the I group the imaginary parts. It's 11 and 4i. Now, you don't have to make a big deal and put all this, but I will caution you. People make a lot of algebra mistakes because they do it in one line in their head. And again, if you do it in one line in your head and it's wrong, what do you grade, right? I mean, there's no work to grade. There's an answer and it's wrong. So again, just from a test taking skill, try to be aware of that, right? You can't, just don't do one line and then you're done. Okay. That's it. I mean, I, how about subtracting? It's going to be almost exactly the same, right? So again, I'm just going to substitute in the first one and the second one. What I like to do, because again, people make a lot of algebra mistakes. I like to distribute the minus sign through. I mean, people don't do it, and then they muck up the minus two icon. I mean, it happens a lot. It's not one or two people, maybe a third of the class. Okay, so pay attention, try it. I just like to distribute it, and then we're back in the same case. I'll drop the brackets, right? Drop the brackets, and then I'll put the real parts together and then the imaginary part, just as I did with addition. Lump the real parts, factor out the I, and then finish up, right? Again, I'm not necessarily saying so we can, it's a complex number, right? I have an A and I have a B. You can tell me what they are, so we're good to go. I mean, it's, it's you know, again, for the homework, you're gonna get a couple of numbers, they're gonna tell you add, subtract, multiply, and divide. If you can do it, you're good to go. I mean, get your work done, be done, live your life. So adding and subtracting, pretty straightforward. How about multiplication? Now I have a couple of cases here because we're building up. Multiplication, okay, there's, there's one thing that always comes up, I'll go over. So the first one, I give you two complex numbers and I want you to multiply them together, right? Okay, let's do this. I have Z1, Z2, and I just plug in their values, right? I just plug in the Z1, and for the Z2, I'm just going to plug its values. Okay, it's a complex number. Its value isn't a, a, just like four. It's it's a complex. It's a whole piece, right? It's like it's, if, it, if we're talking about algebra and functions, the value is the function. The piece is the function. If we're talking about chess, the piece is the whatever the chess piece is. Now, I, I'm just going to use distributed property. I don't, you know, people foil this first outside and say, I, look, I, for easy things, maybe, but you have eyes floating around and you got to keep things. Okay, that's going to be my A, right? That's my A in this little game. That's my B, right? And that's my C. And I'm just going to plug it in. I mean, just follow the rule. A goes times B and then A times C, right? And that's what we did. Okay. 
So again, I just we just showed the values there and followed the rules. Just plug everything in as they go. And now I, I have to distribute it from the back side, right? So A has to get multiplied, right? So I'm doing the back side. So A goes here. That's my A. So see, I'm just putting everything into pieces. It's going to be 1 times the 4, 2i times the 4, 1 times the 3i, and 2i times the 3i. And then I'm just going to clean. So all this works exactly as you would expect. 4 times 2i is 8i. 1 times 3i is 3i. Now this is the key. This will always happen when you multiply. So be, pay attention. This is it. When you multiply, you always get an i squared in there. Or you made a mistake. Look for it. It's easy to drop it when you're rushing through the test or when you're trying to do something. You're going to expect to see the i squared. You're going to see it. If you don't see it, look back. It's possible something happened, but you probably made a mistake. All right? So look for it. And now, here's the key, and this will always happen. The definition on the first slide was I squared is minus 1. This will always happen. Always, always, always. Whenever you're multiplying, look for this. Look for it. So I'm going to replace I squared with minus 1. It will always happen. And now 6 times minus 1 is minus 6. So I'm just going to do exactly the same. Put my real parts together. Put my imaginary parts together. And we just do what we did before. So that's my A. That's my B. Okay, so it has the right form. So you always expect to see an I squared in there when you're multiplying. Always. If you don't, an I squared is minus 1. You've made a mistake. So check. I mean, check. Write the correct form. A is minus 2. B is 11. Good to go. If it, if it matches the template, it's a complex number. Okay, so that's my first one. Now let's check out the second one. This one always throws people off. But again, it's z squared. What would you do if it's, if it's 2 squared or x squared? It's z squared. It just means z times z, right? If you're thinking z is just a, an object, it's a number. Okay, it's a complex number, but z squared is z times z. So just plug in your, your number. z is 3 plus 6. I get it is a number. It's just a complex number. Right? z goes and z goes in both spots. And we do exactly the same as we did before. Again, because we're multiplying, we should get an i squared in here. And I just put in all the steps. Distributed property, right, on down. And, and you can pause and look through it, right? But it's exactly the same steps as before. And again, notice we have the i squared in there, and i squared equals minus 1. Okay? And again, if you work through it. Practice it. Practice. Practice. And it met, it's a plus bi. All right? Now, here's a special case, and we're going to need this for division. That's why I told you conjugates are used for division. So we're, we're going to multiply our number by its conjugate. Do you guys rem you remember what the conjugate is, right? If you don't, no, no, don't panic. Don't panic, of course, on the task, but don't panic. The conjugate, you just change the sign, right? The conjugate is the bar. You just change the sign, okay? So our z, right, our z is z plus 2i. So what's the conjugate? It's 1 minus 2i, right? You just change this. I mean, that's just the definition, and you'll see why it's defined this way. It has a unique property. So whenever you multiply by the conjugate, this is what's going to happen, okay? So there's z, right? And there's its conjugate. Again, notice the signs differ. The signs differ. Now, just multiply it out like you always do. And what happened? Follow the steps. Just follow the steps. In the same way we did before. Same way we did before. So again, pause, look over the steps. Now, what happened? you will always, always get the imaginary part to be zero. Now, it's a good thing. It's a good thing. 
It's a good thing. You will always get the imaginary part to, dis to be zero. If you're multiplying a number by its conjugate, this is why you can use it for division. This always happens. Okay, so look for it. As I said, whenever you multiply two complex numbers together, you have to get the i squared in there. You have to. If you're multiplying a number by its conjugate, the imaginary part always has to be zero or you made a mistake. All right, so whenever you multiply a number by its conjugate, you have to get the imaginary part of zero. Remember that because, again, it's a good check on your test. If it doesn't happen, you made a mistake. So that's a big deal. So notice, a number multiplied by its conjugate equals a, equals a, equals a real number. And that, that's going to be necessary for division. So we did multiplication here. We should be comfortable with that. Okay? And we're going to need this for division. Okay. Now I give you two complex numbers, and I want you to divide them. All right? We're going to divide them. Okay, so let's just take it one step at a time. So when I, okay, division, Z1 over Z2. Now this is, this is always how you're going to do it. I don't care, the, the book you get, on the test you get two different complex numbers. It doesn't matter, it's always going to work this way. Okay, now I'm going to put something here for one. This is the opposite of canceling, right? I'm going to multiply by the bottom, take the bottom and multiply by the conjugate, Z2. Now I can't just do, I gotta, it has to be one. So if I'm putting a Z2 conjugate in the top, I have to do it in the bottom, right? Z1 is this, Z2 is this, and the conjugate of Z2 just flip the sign. Now, now this is the line that looks more reasonable. Look, look what I have. Z1 is there. That's what I'm given, right? So Z1 is given. Z2 is given. So you have this. You have this. These two pieces. You have this left part here, right? And notice what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply top and bottom, right, by the conjugate of the bottom. Top and bottom by the conjugate of the bottom. Always, all the time. That's, that's the bottom. Find its conjugate and just multiply top and bottom by the conjugate. It's always going to happen. It's always going to happen. You don't need the Z1 and Z2. You're just going to have your number. You're dividing. Find the bottom. Find its conjugate. Mul multiply top and bottom. And you'll see why this works. All right, that's one. That's equals one, but okay. So now these are the, the division is just tests everything. The top is multiplication, and the bottom is multiplication. So let's just do the top here. Right, 2 minus 5i times 1 plus 6i. This is just what we did in the previous example. Pause the video, try working it out. Okay, I didn't put in the steps, but it comes out to here. 32 plus 7i. Okay. That's what, I mean, it just comes, it's a, when you multiply, you're going to have i squared in there, i squared is minus 1, and this is what you get. Okay, that's a complex number. Now do the bottom, right? 1 minus 6i, 1 plus, I, plus 6i. You don't have to get excited about the z equal 2, z2 hat, whatever. It's just you're multiplying two complex numbers, but you know they're conjugates. So look what's going to happen. It just equals a number. I left out the steps. It's just a number. It will always happen when you multiply a number by its conjugate, complex number by its conjugate. It's just a real number. Now look why, how, why this works. It's a gimmick. I mean, I get it, but it works. This is how you define it. The top stays as a complex number, but the bottom is a real number. And from the first example, the first example, we know how to clean this up. Right, you have to write this in this form, and now it's a complex number. And you can only do that, you can only do that if the bottom's a real number. So that's the correct form. A is that piece, right? And B is that piece. Okay? So they're all going to work. Whenever you do division, whatever your numbers are, again, you don't have to keep calling everything Z1 and Z2. Fine, just go with the numbers directly. But it's always going to work like that. Okay? So from this section, just go, go in your book, go in the homework. You'll get two complex numbers. You should be able to add them together, subtract them, multiply them, 
and perform division on them. I mean, there's no ambiguity. If you can't do that, you've got problems. Be able to do that and you should be fine. Again, I'm very precise what I my expectations and that's going to show on the exams. Okay, so be very clear what I want you to be able to do. Okay, it doesn't matter what they are, just practice the steps. And again, if you have any trouble, let me know. You, you can get this. All right, guys, good luck with that.